Good morning, good afternoon everyone. My name is Marwan Altai. I am a product manager working for CI in Belgium. Today I'm going to be with you to explain the content of the new uh, solution, the Fiber Reinforced Concrete in CI Engineer. Um, maybe before starting, I would like to check if the sound clear for you. Okay, so we can move on. Um, before going to uh, the details of uh, this presentation or this webinar, I would like to check a um, few things. Um, be sure that the sound is okay. If not, then you can use the sound panel to adapt or to adjust the volume. Um, during the webinar, in case that you have any question uh, about the steel fiber concrete or even about the concrete design in general, you can use this opportunity. I am the responsible guy for the concrete design in CA engineer, and I would like to get your question. I will do my best to answer all your questions during the webinar, but in case that the time will not be enough, then definitely I will come back to you with some answers. Um, of course, this webinar will be recorded. You can find the record uh, on our website, www.sia.net. Also, you can find it in our uh, YouTube channel. Um, the content of this webinar, it will be um, regarding the new material, regarding the steel fiber concrete. I will explain to you how we built up this new library, how you can use it. Um, also, we will discuss today the calculation of the internal forces, uh, what's the differences between uh, using a steel fiber concrete and obtaining the internal forces uh, for traditional uh, concrete uh, floor, for instance. Then we will talk about the capacity check and uh, the last part will be about the um, the supported checks in CI Engineer regarding the solution for ULS, SLS, and the last part it will be for the nonlinear calculation. Um, next point I would like to mention is um, about the steel fiber concrete. In fact, this project has been done uh, based on a deep collaboration with Beckard, and for those who um, not uh, they don't know uh, Beckard. Beckard, in fact, a company who is producing uh, a steel wire, different types of steel wires, not necessarily be the steel fibers that we use in the concrete, but they are also producing several types of wires, like the wires that uh, could be used with the tires, the wires could be used also with the book binders, uh, etc. So they are, uh, you can call them as a product leader in producing um, the steel wires. Today, um, for our topics, in fact, we will talk about three um, different types of uh, fibers, which is used or which is produced by Beckard. It's called the Dramex steel fiber. And uh, today, in our solution, in CI Engineer version 18, you can use those three types of fibers uh, in combination with the traditional reinforcement to reinforce your floor system. Um, maybe someone will ask what's the differences between the 3D, 4D, 5D and why they are using this uh, terminology. In fact, the name it's linked to the form or to the shape of the, of the fiber. This is uh, basically um, how it is. Um, the usage of, of those different types, you can use all of them, but Finally, it's somehow limited to uh, the type of the structure. Uh, with some structure, you need to use 4D. With other structures, you need to, to use 5D. So um, I think you need to a little bit understand the differences by reading some articles about that, or you can maybe contact Beckard directly to understand which one is uh, the best for your project. But from our side, as a software company, you can use all these types of fiber to calculate or to analyze your uh, floor system. Now we can move on with the, um, with the material itself. And there is something very uh, important uh, I would like to mention to you about the terminology that we use for the steel fiber uh, as a material. As you can see, the name, it's a little bit longer than usual. Um, if we compare that with the, with the name for the 
traditional concrete, we use C3037, something like that. So with the normal um, concrete material, material, we use the class of the concrete as indication to, to the material itself. But with the steel fiber, it's a little bit tricky. And for that reason, we, in, we made uh, the, the name a uh, little bit longer to make it more easy uh, for the user to understand. And I'm going to explain to you what's the meaning of all of that. Um, the name will start with the C, uh, something about the class of the concrete, the characteristic of the concrete, and then indication about the type of the fiber, 5D, 3D, or 4D. And then something which is the aspect ratio and the length of the steel fiber. So when you change something here, in fact, you are changing the material itself. Also, uh, a letter to, in, to in, indicate the, the, the way how you are coating the steel fiber. And there are two options in CI Engineer, uh, the bright and galvanized steel fiber. Then also the way how you are going to deliver the steel fiber to the mixture also will influence the material itself. And there are three options inside CI Engineer. And finally, uh, some indication about the kilograms inside the mixture. So basically, this is um, the name that we use for the library. And when you generate some uh, something by your own, the name of the material will be adapted automatically. Um, next topic, um, the question could be how um, we obtained how we obtained the uh, residual strength of the of the uh, concrete fi fiber concrete. In fact, if you read the German guideline, and maybe I missed to to tell you that our calculation today for the steel fiber concrete, it's based on the German guideline. As you know. Till now, there is no recommendation, there is no specification in the Eurocode about the steel fiber concrete. But you can find in each country there are several requirements or recommendations uh, 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 for that topic. But today we are using the German guideline as, um, as, um, as a, a code for the calculation and for the checks for the steel fiber concrete. And if you read um, the, the German guideline, um, they are explaining how you can obtain the residual strength and they are saying minimum you need uh, six uh, tests to obtain that value. What we have in CI Engineer, we obtain the library based, as I mentioned, based on uh, very good collaboration with Beckard and Beckard made really huge uh, tests to obtain that value. And this value, um, it's um, somehow influenced by the concrete class, the fiber type, and the fiber dosage. Not only that, also I would like to mention that in CI Engineer, there is some uh, calculation happening in the background of the material. So when you change something, in fact, all the calculation of the final design value for the strength will be adapted automatically. But we start our um, background calculation based on precondition, we are assuming the value of this residual strength is equal uh, to that value. Then this value will be multiplied by a factor from the German guideline to obtain the residual flexural strength. Then the next step also, this value, which is the last value from the previous stage, will be multiplied by a beta factor to obtain the basic value for the residual tensile strength. And the German guideline already explained to us how we can obtain the beta factor, which is something like that implemented in CI Engineer. Finally, um, in order to calculate the design value, the user would like to have uh, a factor, which is the long-term factor, and also coefficient take into account um, the, um, the long-term effect. Those two factors can be modified uh, from the properties of the national annex. Finally, if you look inside CI Engineer and open the library of the steel fiber concrete, you can see it as somehow divided to three parts. And this is what important for us. The first part, which is the characteristic basic value, and then the residual tensile th strength, and the final one, which is the design value of the residual tensile strength. Keep that in your mind. This is, in fact, what we use in CI Engineer. Um, inside the checks and inside the calculation of the dosage. 
So this is very important uh, um, value, and um, I I will explain a few things about those values later. Now, um, I'm, I'm going to show you that uh, in CI Engineer directly um, in order to not skip uh, many things. Um, first of all, I would like to ask you um, to not forget when you, uh, when you would like to design a structure or to analyze a floor system containing steel fiber, uh, please activate the concrete, traditional concrete as a material, as well as the steel fiber concrete. Maybe someone will ask me why I need to activate uh, the traditional concrete as long as I'm just going to use the steel fiber concrete. In fact, we are using a big part of the uh, formulas for the concrete design, from the concrete design from the Eurocode. Um, those formulas can be quite used also inside the steel fiber concrete. The part which is related to the, to the checks itself, it's um, done by the German guideline. Other parts, uh, we can take it already from what we implemented in the bus regarding the concrete. That's why um, in order to activate the steel fiber concrete, always don't forget to activate the concrete as a material. This is the activation uh, point of view. Um, uh, at the end of this webinar, I, I will explain to you uh, the calculation, the nonlinear calculation. And now, maybe just quickly to indicate that in order to do nonlinear calculation, of course, you need to activate the nonlinearity. And inside the nonlinearity, you will find 2D physical nonlinearity FRC, which is required to do nonlinear calculation for the fiber reinforced concrete. So those two items should be also uh, activated in order to do nonlinear calculation. And now if we go to the library inside the concrete, you will find the fiber. And those are the three types of the, of the fibers that we, we can use, 3D, 4D, 5D. Um, as I explained to you here, uh, you can find some uh, parameters to change uh, from uh, um, this, uh, the fiber itself. Um, from the material, maybe someone can say this is a um, complex situation. I need the library directly. Just from the project data, you can activate the material and here you will find uh, all the properties which is I already explained to you. This is the first part, and this is the second part, and this is the designed value. All right. So this is the material itself. And finally, if you go to the concrete menu, you will find there is one sub-menu inside the concrete tree. It's called SFRC 2D member, and this containing the internal internal forces and the rest of the checks. I think this is um, clear to you, so um, I'm going to go back to my presentation. Next point I would like to uh, to explain is the internal forces. How we do the calculation of the internal forces, and the question could be. Is there any differences if I will do uh, the internal forces for a normal concrete floor compared with the fiber concrete floor? I'm going to explain that to you. Basically, SIA do uh, the internal forces calculation in the same way for traditional concrete and also for the steel fiber concrete. First of all, we calculate the elementary, how we call it elementary internal forces, which is as you are familiar with MX, MY, MXY, etc. Then in the next step, we calculate the principal forces and we do the calculation in the center of the cross section and on the surfaces of the, of the cross section on the top and bottom side. And finally, we calculate the design forces. And in the design forces, we um, use uh, a Bowman, it's called the Bowman transformation method, where we transform the internal, uh, internal forces in the direction of the reinforcement. In fact, there are several advantages from using um, this method. And within this method, we are also doing many things, like we take into account the effect of the torsion. Um, we do some shifting to the bending moment to uh, be compatible with 
the with the euro code because there is one article in the euro code talking about shifting of bending moment and also there is one advantage from using Bowman transformation method which is uh, not necessarily that you can use uh, the reinforcement in 0 90 degree how we used to do that uh, but now we, you can also uh, change the direction of the reinforcement for instance 45 degree and then see are still able to calculate the internal forces and do the design or the check uh, next part, um, I would like to compare the capacity of the traditional concrete section compared with the capacity of the steel fiber concrete. Today, uh, keep in your mind, today in this webinar, always I will compare the steel fiber concrete with the traditional concrete because I'm, I'm, I'm taking in my account that the majority of you uh, very familiar with the concrete design and it will be more uh, sensible if I will compare it with something that I know. We know that the steel fiber concrete somehow um, a new uh, tool today, um, not too many software offering a solution and basically in Europe only SIA offering that solution. So um, it could be that not all of you are familiar with the way how you can design the steel fiber concrete, but if we will compare that with the traditional concrete, then the idea will be very clear. And now for the capacity. Um, probably you are familiar with this figure from the Euro code. This figure explained to you um, how you can calculate the capacity of the cross section and how you can make the equilibrium inside the cross section. And as you can see from here, you have the tension bar supported by the traditional reinforcement and you have some compression in the concrete. Now the question, does that also will be similar in case of the steel fiber concrete? If we look inside this uh, similar diagram, we will see Almost we have the same element, we have the same forces, Fc, the forces in the concrete, and we have, um, uh, we have the forces here, Fs plus Fs minus, which is the forces from coming from the traditional reinforcement, but there is one uh, factor which is the factor influenced by the exist of, uh, of the steel fiber. So, because of that, we are expecting now the new capacity of this new cross-section containing steel fiber could be bigger than um, the normal capacity of the traditional cross-section. So this is uh, the first point. We should keep that in our mind. And also, if we will see this uh, diagram, which is the citrus strain diagram for the steel fiber concrete. Somehow it looks like uh, the diagram for the uh, reinforced concrete. And this giving us the feeling that the steel fiber will behave just like uh, traditional reinforcement inside the cross section based on that diagram. So we will see uh, how much the steel fiber can participate in the capacity of the cross section and if the steel fiber will participate in the capacity of the cross section then it could mean I can reduce a little bit something uh, from the uh, traditional reinforcement inside the same cross section. At this point in fact take me to another um, subject which is the calculation of the dosage and uh, the calculation of the capacity itself um, the way how we calculate the capacity inside uh, SIA engineer, in fact, SIA assuming that a same amount of, of kilograms of fibers exist inside each mesh. For instance, we start from the maximum amount of kilograms in each mesh, and then we obtain the unity check for the capacity. And if we see the unity check, it's far away from one then we make another iteration we reduce the kilogram and this kind of a process it's done in SIA engineer to obtain the optimal value of the kilograms so we do that in two direction we do that for the top and for the bottom layer so four times we calculate the capacity of the cross section to obtain the uh, optimal amount of kilograms inside each mesh of your slab. And finally, when you go to the brief output, you will see the brief output represented by that. With it, you can see the uh, internal forces, the resistance forces, etc. Um, 
I think it's still maybe not clear to you uh, what is the advantage and why should I use the steel fiber um, in combination or without even the traditional reinforcement. So I will try during this webinar to quickly explain the advantage of using the steel fiber, uh, but um, definitely the time, the time will not be enough to explain all of that. So I will focus on few critical points. Um, let me show you, uh, for instance, um, this project. In this project, what I made, uh, I have two examples. I have a slab uh, supported directly on the soil. You can call it a mat foundation, something like that, containing a steel fiber. I use 30 kilograms per meter cube. I'm using 5D steel fiber and exactly the same floor system but with the traditional concrete. I am a little bit curious. I would like to see what's the differences between them. As I indicated to you, um, if we are talking about the internal forces, um, let's check the internal forces for, um, for the um, uh, traditional concrete, as we, you can see from zero to minus 10. If we go to the internal forces um, inside the uh, floor system, which is containing fiber, also we're talking about the same internal forces. So this concludes what I already mentioned to you. The calculation of the internal forces will not be influenced uh, by um, the fiber itself. So we're talking about the same uh, floor system, in fact. Now, what I have in the tree, I have the internal forces, I have the dosage design. Inside the dosage design, you can select one floor uh, different, so the behavior of C engineer is exactly the same. Then you can select the load combination that you would like to use to obtain the optimal uh, dosage amount. And I'm doing the calculation in node average in, in, in this case. If I will click refresh, then now what's happening? SIA calculated the kilograms which is necessary to obtain the best uh, unity check for the capacity. So as long as I'm limited between 20 to 34, then I'm expecting that the capacity of my floor system without any traditional reinforcement should be okay. Now, if I will go to the capacity using the same combination, everything should be the same. And if I would check the unity check, I will see it, everything is green. That's mean um, ED is less than MRD, something like that. Okay, I will go back to the capacity. There is something I would like to mention. In some cases, I would like to show you it like that. In some cases, you will get the result like that, plank. There is no result inside it. And this, in fact, it's an indication from CI engineer to the user to tell the user that the required kilograms is more than 35 kilograms. What I did, in fact, I just removed the averaging of the peak. So we have huge citruses here, and that's why without uh, the activation of the average strip, CIAO will calculate the fibers here and the required fiber will be more than 35. So this is indication from CI engineer to the user to tell him, be careful, your economy, your the cost of your floor system will be too much. And that's why we are hiding a little bit the result. Let's go back to the original case where I don't have any issue and the maximum 34. I calculated the dosage and the dosage is shown like that. I can present the dosage inside uh, the tables. I can send it to the engineering report. Now, the question, should I use 34 everywhere or should I divide it? This is something up to the designer to decide. Next, I will go to the capacity. I already did, it, did that. Inside the capacity uh, values, you can see MRD. And you can find an RD. Now, the question, 
how can I know that because I decided to use the steel fiber here only without traditional reinforcement, I can save some reinforcement, traditional reinforcement from the same system. As I told you, we're talking about the same project. This one has no traditional reinforcement, just like this one, but even without steel fiber. And if I will go to the reinforcement design, inside the reinforcement design, you can find the value which is called required statically. Required statically, it means only the static reinforcement which is required to obtain uh, the necessary resistance. So there is no detailing of provision taken into account. And if I will calculate, you will see this is shear. If I will calculate, you will see that SIA required you to put some reinforcement inside your slab. This is the top reinforcement. If I will go to the bottom reinforcement, something like that. Okay, that's mean in order to obtain uh, the necessary capacity for this cross section, I need to put the um, the reinforcement, the traditional reinforcement, but this amount of reinforcement will not be required in case I can use the 34 grams of the steel fiber somewhere under the columns and then the rest could be only 20 kilograms. I hope the idea is clear for you with, with this comparison, how you can obtain better resistance by using only the concrete with the steel fiber without using the traditional concrete. Let's go back to um, to the presentation. And now I am going to talk about a very interesting topic, which is the shear force uh, check and punching design for any floor system containing a steel fiber. Again, I will do the comparison with the traditional concrete to make it more clear to you. Um, basically, as you are familiar with, in order to calculate the value of VRDC, we are using this formula. This is from the Eurocode. And then we also calculate, uh, sorry, no. Um, however, for the calculation of the VRDC, but with the steel fiber, the formula is a combination of two things. VRDC plus VRDCF, and this is the extra value could be added to the VRDC due to the participation of the steel fiber in the resistance against the shear. And this is the formula from the German guideline. And here they are explaining to us how we can calculate the value VRDCF. And finally, um, this is the explanation also about how we can calculate the shear uh, citruses around the column um, at the first control parameter uh, and at the face of the column, U0, U1, as you are familiar. So what I would like to say, what I would like to say, in fact, the principle of doing the shear check or the punching design is, is exactly the same when you have a steel fiber concrete. Only we have to take into account the participation of the steel fiber in the formula. And the German guideline indicated like that. This is for the shear check and this is for the punching check. This is a quick comparison with the Eurocode regarding the design. What you can see now on the on the screen, I made um, two examples, two identical. The only difference I have within this slab, this slab in fact supported by several columns, but inside this slab I use um, 30 kilograms of steel fiber, and in this slab I use nothing, just traditional reinforcement. Okay, and as you can see for the slab here on the left side, um, the internal columns will not require any punching shear reinforcement, while the traditional slab with the traditional reinforcement, I need to put extra reinforcement due to punching requirement somewhere here. And if we look to the differences in the values itself, we will see that, um, if I will make it a little bit like that, 
if we will compare to, uh, the VED, we are talking about the same VED, the uh, bending moment. Um, just for your info, here we have the slab with the steel fiber, here the slab without the steel fiber. So we we talking about two identical cases. The differences is only here, with and without. The uh, effective depth of the slab is the same. The calculation of the critical parameter, it's the same. The only difference that we have it, it's here. The calculation of VRDC. And you can see when I'm using the steel fiber, the value of VFVRDC, it's higher than the value when I have the a normal concrete. I will make that uh, more clear for you uh, by going back to the to this example. I'm going to do the shear checks now with the same combination. Everything is the same, and I'm using the design. Keep in your mind something very interesting with the with the calculation of the capacity. Maybe I missed to say that you can use several uh, or you can use different values for the kilograms. You can ask from the software to use the kilograms, which is de defined already in the material at the beginning of your project, or you can use the designed value. It means that SIA will calculate the necessary kilograms automatically and use that value to obtain the capacity, or you can decide the capacity by yourself based on the kilograms that you will input. So. Let's run it like that. I have 30, and of course, I will get some problems here because if you still remember, it was required 34 kilograms. So if I will make it uh, 35, for instance, and run the check again, you will see the capacity check will be fine. This is something quick. I missed to explain that to you uh, about the, 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 the selection of the dosage the same thing it will be with the shear with the punching with all these checks i can play with the uh, kilograms that we have and now i'm going to do the capacity not the capacity the shear checks for this floor system and i will compare the shear resistance of my floor system here with the traditional concrete what i'm going to do i'm going to go to the table result and let's delete Sorry, delete this result and generate them again. Uh, I'm interested in comparing this point here. Uh, as I remember, it was 73. So here, in this item, in this point, I have this calculation. So I'm going to pick that. copy I will put it somewhere here to compare the result and then I will do the same things but this time for the same point on my traditional concrete so I will calculate it for that system and here I will go to the shear reinforcement and the point should be 360 Yes, 360, as you can see it. So we have two exactly two points where we can compare the result. I will take also this result and I will put it in the same place. So let's see what's the differences between them. What's uh, important to know is this value, in fact. If we see this is, in fact, the value of VRDC coming from the system containing steel fiber. And this is the value VRDC coming from the system which is not containing steel fiber. As you can see those two values, the value from the steel fiber, it's higher. And the question which could come to your mind, why 86 become uh, 106? If we go back to the presentation itself what the code said the code said that for the calculation of the VRDC with steel fiber the value of VRDC should be taken from the euro code it's exactly the same then why I have a different value because this is the participation of the uh, steel fiber but I'm expecting to have exactly the same VRDC 
in both cases in my example. However, I don't have. There is something mentioned in the, in the German guideline and they are saying in case that you are going to use a system containing steel fiber without traditional reinforcement then in that case you can use the full cross section normally when we do a design we have reinforcement somewhere and we're talking about uh, something we call it effective depth as long as in my system here uh, there is no traditional reinforcement, then I can use the full height of the cross section. And now if I will do uh, some, some quick cal hand calculation, I can see uh, the 86, if I will have the 86 divided by 165, which is the D effective, multiply by 200, I'm sorry, and then this should give me uh, a value equal to 104, which is close to this one. I'm doing that quickly. So my point from this comparison that not only the participation of the steel fiber will, uh, will help you, but also in case that you, will de you decided to not put traditional reinforcement in your system, you can use the full height of your cross section, and this will give you a value higher than what... Uh, in your VRDC. And then, according to the German guideline, this value should be added to this value, but we should take into account there is a limit. And the limit, it's, I think, it's taking the maximum between them. And finally, we obtain the value, which is with F. And this value will be used uh, for the unity check. If we go to, to the shear check again, And this is the value. So we have VED 379 and the value VRDC 106 and VRDC F106. And finally, we have the value VRDC F. Uh, the German guideline also in, in punching, uh, they gave a limit that uh, should not, uh, um, let's show it here. Here, uh, and this, the value of uh, VR, VF, ARDC should be uh, not more than 1.4 multiply bar VRDC. So if you, um, if we, if I use the calculator now, if I will multiply 106 uh, by 1.4, somehow it should give me a value close to this value. Yes, it's 100, uh, 100. 48. I think now the idea is clear how you can, uh, how the steel fiber participating in the resistance of the shear and also participating in the resistance of the punching. For the punching, this is the example that I made. We can see it quickly. We are already running uh, late. Punching, I'm doing the punching now. Current all. So now, as you can see, just for your information, the colors in CI Engineer indicating the case. So if it is a green color, it means there is no uh, punching reinforcement. Uh, I will do the same for the traditional slab with the same uh, things. All check. And the blue color to indicate that some shear reinforcement or punching reinforcement should be required here. I'm sorry, I, I need to move uh, faster than what I'm doing now. Um, next uh, checks I would like to mention it's the the cracks calculation. Again, the procedure of the cracks calculation is quite similar to the tra traditional concrete. Uh, we have two values. We calculate the cracking citrus. We compare it with. <coughs> sorry. <coughs> With the, with the citruses inside the concrete and we're using this diagram. So basically the principle, exactly the same calculation of the citrus pair direction, calculation of a principal citrus, then we calculate the angle, etc. So the principle is exactly the same, but I still want to see the differences between the traditional concrete and the steel fiber concrete. And here, 
in the Eurocode, if you would like to design a structure and take into account the calculation of the cracks, then the Eurocode indicating 7.8, 7.9, 7.10, I think, also, and 7.11. This is the way how we calculate the cracks in the Eurocode. So the, the crack size is, is the value of um, obtained from the multiplication of the maximum, the spacing between the cracks multiplied by this strain. Now the question is that also will be valid for the steel fiber concrete? In fact, yes and no. It's uh, almost the same formula, but we should take into account the participation of the steel fiber in that formula. As you can see, it's exactly the same, only this is the difference. And here the German guideline explained to us how we can calculate the differences in the strain. And this value, in fact, it's exactly the value like here but it's multiplied by one minus alpha and alpha according to the german guideline it's uh, something less than one so in fact the value when we are using the steel fiber concrete of the strain is less than the value in the traditional concrete the same story for the sr max almost the same uh, uh, formula multiply by this factor Let's see what does that mean in CI Engineer. For that reason, I prepared the three models. The first model is a beam, but I gave it uh, a dimension of a slab to simulate the behavior of a slab, but on 1D member. So it's a beam, one meter width, and the thickness is 200 mm, mm, uh, millimeter, has only traditional reinforcement. The second one, I have a slab, with the same amount of reinforcement, everything identical, but it's a slab. And the, th the third example, it's the same slab, but this time I combine the traditional reinforcement with a SFRC, with a steel fiber. And I calculated the cracks. In a case, uh, in the, the beam case, I see the cracks appear, but the unity check is not okay. And if I will go to the second case, again, the cracks appear, but the unity check is not okay. And now if we go to the steel fiber, we will see that the cracks appear, but the unity check is okay. So the steel fiber made some magic inside the, the system that I have. And I would like to understand why, as long as we're talking about exactly the same, why or how the steel fiber participated on that. So if we look inside the result itself, you see the result for beam RC, without steel fiber, and this is the result of the steel fiber. What we need to look, let's check first if we're talking about the same internal forces. Almost, it's the same internal forces, so 78, 78. If we go to the citruses in the steel, 524, 524. If we're talking about the tension in the concrete, 11, 11, 11, 11. So we're talking about almost the same thing, then still the question, why I have unity check in the steel fiber better? For that reason, if you would like to read a little bit inside the German guideline, then you will find this statement, which is a nice statement. They are explaining uh, the behavior of the steel fiber inside the material itself. And they are saying the effect of the fibers leads to reduction in the forces that the reinforcement steel has to resist. What's the meaning of that? In fact, the meaning of that, we will obtain a strain less than compared with the traditional concrete, and also we will obtain SR max less than compared with traditional concrete. Let's check those two results, if that's correct. If we look to the traditional concrete, we have a value of 210 for the SR max, while here we have 132, correct? And then the second value, it's 2.22 divided by 1,000, and here we have 12.9 divided by 10,000. So again, this is, uh, this is uh, less than. And now if I will, uh, now if I will uh, uh, do some hand calculation, um, I would say 12.9 uh, divided by 10,000 multiply by 132.9 and this gives me a crack width equal to 0.7.1 and this is uh, 
the value and now if you multiply 210 by this value you will you, you will obtain the value of the cracks equal to 0.4 and 0.4 it's bigger than 0.3 that's why the unity check is not okay but the unity check for the steel fiber concrete okay now still something in my mind i would like i don't know if you notice that or not um here when we're talking about the unity check we will see a smooth curvature for the traditional concrete the same thing for the beam why the curve of the unity check weird little bit look like batman head i don't know but it's little bit weird um in order to um explain that to you i'm going to the to the model for that uh, part uh th those the three cases that i made and concrete crack so i'm doing the cracks for sls as as you can see now so as you can see the unity check it's somehow variable definitely it will be variable for one reason because we ask from sia to calculate the crack width based on the designed dosage so the dosage here not necessarily be the same dosage here but now if i will change the dosage to uh, let's say 35 and do the calculation now we can see the same behavior or the same curve because the value of the kilograms is exactly the same everywhere so i hope this idea is clear to you and now this is the value for the uh, unity check if i will compare it with uh, 2d the same combination everything should be the same i have the value not okay and i can do also the cracks for 1d design same load combination and here it's a crack unity check it's two point something so um i think this is clear now we can move on with the with the presentation i will little bit review the advantage we said for the capacity we can use the full height of the cross section in case that we don't use the traditional reinforcement and this has some influence on the capacity and on the shear capacity we said also the steel fiber will participate in the resistance of the shear we saw that and now we are talking about the cracks calculation and we have seen how the steel fiber will influence the calculation of the cracks next um, topic um, it's uh, the citrus limitation basically there is no differences between the traditional concrete and the steel fiber concrete but keep be careful the differences will be there in case you will do non-linear calculation but with the linear calculation in fact there is no different the, re the result very identical so this is the result from the traditional concrete and this is the result from the steel fiber concrete as you can see is copy paste there is no difference but if i will do non-linear calculation then the story will be uh, different um, next um, topic is the non-linear calculation uh, in non-linear calculation uh, again don't forget to activate the nonlinearity and activate the physical nonlinearity for FS, F, uh, FRC. Keep in your mind also, we developed uh, those two things in version I, uh, 18. So you can do nonlinear, physical nonlinearity for traditional concrete, then you need to activate this box. And if you have steel fiber, then you need to activate that box. For nonlinear calculation, the user can find several. Uh, our two different types of citrus citrine diagram this diagram with a peak value in the tension side and in some cases it could be that you would like to uh, speed up the calculation then you can pick the value like that without any peak for the reinforcement as usual we use uh, those two diagrams for the reinforcement with stiffening and without um, before i forget uh, to 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 mention that um, in ci engineer we use uh, the material damage mod model which is called mazars you can find uh, on our online help some explanation about this method and you can find the reference of that to understand 
um, what I mean by that. Also, we're using a Newton Raphson method as a method for the calculation for nonlinearity. The user can um, increase or he can change number of in increments which is should be applied on the load and the user also can increase or decrease the number of iteration should be combined with the nonlinear calculation. Um, in CI Engineer, we made a lot of tests to be sure that the method that we use in the physical nonlinearity is uh, correct and it gives uh, a result close to the reality. Um, also, we studied the influence of changing the mesh size um, on the result. As you can see from this diagram, this is the load deflection diagram and this result from uh, um, example from the reality and this is from C engineer and you see some influence um, from the mesh size also we studied uh, the cases if you pick with peak value and without peak value and you can see the result uh, uh, from with peak it will give a result close somehow to to the reality uh, next uh, benchmark I would like to explain is uh, from this uh, model. It's a slab containing steel fiber and it's fixed fixed support. We did the calculation in C engineer and we did the calculation by hand. And based on those formula, we calculated all the uh, forces which is will. Uh, um, lead to obtain the crux movement and the crux forces and the result was quite nice as you can see from the from the diagram uh, this is the diagram between the load and the citruses the behavior of the material very clear it's a linear from load up to 15 until we reach a 15 this will give us a citrus equal to 2.85 something like that approximately and if we will compare this value with the diagram from CI engineer about the citrus train diagram then we are talking about in fact this point and this point we have um, a value of strain equal to 1 and value of citrus equal to 3 so 2.85 I think it's quite okay so we are here and then if we move um, if we move um, in in the load um, here it's already mentioned that the 15 giving us the uh, the cracking moment after 15 then the cracks will start appear then um, in fact we are we will go down like that which is the representation of that part and then we will reach a value of uh, 1.22 citrus which is somehow close to 1.29 and then some stiffening will happen in the in the citrus like that so this is increasing until the failure so i think the behavior of the material uh, quite nice um, uh, based on the calculation of of ci engineer um, also um, if we compare the strain diagram you will see also the material uh, up to 15 behave in a linear way then after 15 we will start that the strain start increasing so um, after 15 uh, no wait uh, in 15 we are here should give us 1.0 and in our case 0 0.8 and then after 15 we will go to this point where it should be close to 3 so it's somewhere somewhere here and then finally up to failure which is 35 it will go somewhere here so in my point of view the simulation of the material the physical nonlinearity, quite nice in C engineer I'm going to show you that example um, as uh, so this is the result I already did the calculation the nonlinear calculation it takes some time to obtain accurate result so I already did that what I'm going to show you is the result so this is the basic stress as you can see it's 0.89 I will increase the load the stress will increase then until 15 we will reach somehow the maximum that we can obtain and then after 15 we should get some drops in in the stresses and then if we reach to 35, we get the failure here. 
so there is no stresses. Um, if we will do the same basic strain, then it also somehow close to reality. So this the failure should be somewhere in 300. So this is 258. I think that's okay. Um, not only the benchmarks that we did it by ourselves, but also there is something I would like to mention. It was made in uh, in China and from this university. I don't know how to pronounce the real name, but let's say Tongyi University. Um, a team of researchers from that university worked with a team of researchers from Beckard Company. Uh, they somehow studied uh, um, a pile cap slab supported by those uh, piles and in fact they made two models and the idea was to compare the models with the analysis from uh, Beckard. So the first model, it's a part of the slab containing one pile and supported by four hydraulic jack, and the second one containing four cups, uh, four piles with one hydraulic jack. The result was uh, uh, they made it uh, like that. This is the result for the real system from the reality, and this is the result from model one where you have one uh, point in the, in the center and point, point in the corner and this is in fact this one it's uh, just um, something like that I mean if I would like to take this one in fact they are reading the result uh, somehow like this yes somewhere like that okay and then uh, this is some image about the way how they made the test. This is the hydraulic jack and they made several cases with using 35, 30 kilograms of, of the fiber. The idea is to obtain this diagram, the load deflection diagram. What we did uh, in collaboration with Beckard, we, set, we made um, the same model, but we pick a quarter of it. So this is the quarter of the model, and this is the location where the hydraulic jack should participate. And we made that model, and we calculated the result. The conclusion of that uh, kind of benchmarking is this is the result from C Engineer, and as you can see, it's quite close to the calculation which was made by uh, the researcher in the university. And the conclusion of that benchmark, which was uh, written by them, they are, they are saying C engineer gives a very accurate prediction of the structural behavior, the collapse load and the first crack load. Also, they are saying giving a similar design result if you are using a yield line theory. So if you would like to do that by yourself and compare the results should be quite close and then uh, give a possibility to design a complex structure and also they are saying CI engineer can design a fiber only or uh, fiber plus steel uh, fibers in combination so um, almost I'm done um, uh, this is the conclusion of, of this webinar. I explained to you um, the content of the material. You can easily pick the necessary material. You don't need to define anything from your side. All the material already defined in CI Engineer. Just activate the concrete and the fiber concrete as a material. I explained to you how you do the design of the kilograms, how you can do the calculation of the capacity uh, what uh, the differences between the capacity uh, between the fiber system and non-fiber system and then quickly I explain to you um, the ULS and SLS checks and the last few minutes it was about the nonlinear calculation I'm sorry because I couldn't spend more than this on the nonlinear calculation it's already done the, the hour that we have it um, now I'm going to uh, read your question and I will try to answer as I can. Please feel free to type your question now. Um, not only about the steel fiber concrete, but even if you have something about the concrete design C engineer, it's still my responsibility. I would like to see how you think about uh, the solution. 
if you think that you have uh, some ideas um, to uh, improve our solution in CI Engineer regarding the concrete design or regarding the steel fiber concrete, just please feel free to send me um, uh, your email address or just tell me we can have a meeting online and we can discuss that together. So let's see what we have from the question now. Well, the first question is about uh, someone asking if that um, if the if the design of the steel fiber reinforced concrete covered by the Euro code, um, based on my knowledge, there is nothing mentioned about in the Euro code at this moment. We are expecting the a new version of the Euro code, and we hope it will contain some information about the steel fiber concrete. However, you will find in each country different or uh, some specification or requirement or you can call it recommendation about the steel fiber concrete for instance for the euro code there is a model code where you can find a lot about the steel fiber concrete um, we made our calculation based on the german guideline at this moment and we will see how it will uh, be in the euro code uh, in the new version i don't know if it is 2020 or 21 we don't know The next question is someone asking uh, about is uh, is in CIA the input of the of the kilograms uh, of the steel fiber will be inputted by CIA or by the user? I think this is what I understand from your question. Uh, definitely inside the material library there is uh, there is amount of fiber. Um, maybe I can show you that again in CIA engineer if we go back to the material. Uh, you, as you can see, this is the material. Here you can see, um, what is it? Here you can see the kilograms. So the material, inside the material, you already can see the kilograms inside it. This amount will be optimized automatically by the software, or you can decide it by yourself. I hope I answered your question. Um, can you send the presentation? Of course, I will do that. Uh, do you have a radial uh, reinforcement solution for the circular slab? I'm not sure if I understand the question. Uh, but yes, uh, based on what I understand, I think you are saying if you, we can input uh, the reinforcement in a radial way, does that take into account? Yes, if you can do it, if you can model it in C Engineer, then uh, these kind of practical reinforcement will be taken into account in combination with the steel fiber. Is there any factor that, uh, uh, is there any safety factor which account uh, for the fact that the fiber may not be 100% uh, uniform. Yes, there is a factor. You can read our online help to find out uh, what's the meaning or how how is the behavior of that factor. Is there a minimum amount of fiber required? Yes, uh, the minimum amount is 20 kilograms in CI Engineer. In reality, I'm not sure how much in life the de designer doing that but in ci engineer you can we have a limit of the steel fiber between 20 and 40. Uh, for the capacity check it will be linked to uh, it will be uh, fixed to 35. Uh, what about the concrete cover for the concrete fiber the traditional uh, method is still be valid for it yes but keep in your mind, if you don't have a steel, if you don't have traditional reinforcement in your cross section, then we will take the full cross section as effective uh, depth. Uh, 
Uh, this is really a good question. Why there is uh, some differences between uh, the beam and the slab? I think you are talking about the cracks calculation. Uh, in fact, I didn't check that, but it could be that due to the um, 2D uh, behavior. I'm going to check that and see. Uh, um, I have your uh, email. I'm going to contact you to see uh, if you find that as something weird. But I don't think the differences was uh, quite different because uh, I still remember the calculation of the crack moment. It was exactly the same. It was only the unit check different, but I, I'm going to check that later. Uh, are the ULS checks also coming from nonlinear calculation? Um, it's in fact, in C engineer, the behavior it's uh, like that. Cancel. If we if we go to the checks, then it's up to you to to select nonlinear uh, combination or linear com uh, combination. So there is no link between them. So it's up to you to decide if you would like to use nonlinear or linear. Some other question is about concrete. I'm going to answer this question later. If we use only fiber reinforced concrete without ordinary steel rebars, yes, but I don't know the rest of the question. Uh, yeah, this is very nice uh, remark from uh, someone who's saying we don't need to apply a minimum quantity of uh, traditional reinforcement in case we don't we have a steel fiber concrete that's fully correct um, in case that you will put uh, the steel fiber with a mixture then you don't need to put as minimum inside your cross section uh, is there a software demo for student uh, for student you can ask for free license if you would like and you will get that uh, as a part of uh, your license Um, someone asking me, can we use a different type of steel fiber? Now we're talking about uh, Dramex fiber, which is produced by Beckard. Can we use a different type of steel fiber? Um, basically, yes, you can use different type of steel fiber. I'm going to uh, go uh, back to the library itself, but it needs some preparation from your side because as I indicate to you that the material uh, properties, it's calculated automatically. As you can see, you cannot change it. But if you deactivate this tick box, then you are able to define your design residual strength by yourself. So if you have a different steel fiber, but you know the residual tensile strength, then you can input those values and then you can use those values in the check itself because the German guideline did not mention if we are using this specific type of steel fiber from this producer or from that producer. The formulas of the check valid always for any type of steel fiber. The only difference here is the properties and the properties can, you, can, you, it can be modified by yourself. Can we combine fiber with the classical reinforcement? Yes, you can combine. Okay, um, I think the, the rest of the question um, it's somehow a kind of a, a question about the concrete design in general. I don't want to take your time. Um, I'm so happy, I'm so glad that you uh, joined me in this webinar. Um, to repeat that, please, um, you can rewatch, you can check it later from tomorrow. We will publish it in our website and our YouTube channel. Um, last thing I would like um, to uh, indicate is uh, please take this my email address 
anyone who would like to participate in making CI Engineer really better, then please contact me and send me your email address. I will be glad to uh, communicate with you. So thank you very much and have a very nice rest of the day. Bye-bye.